demonstration, I'm going to take you through an evolution of web page design. The correct way to design web pages is to separate the content from the design aspect. The content needs to go into HTML tags. The design aspect is done in CSS, and I'm going to do this pretty rapidly through hand coding. We're going to create a basic, very basic page. Yours is going to be more in depth than mine. We're going to create a resume. And then we are going to go through and we are going to redefine it, moving through a little bit of the different history of how web design applied. The first time, I'm going to do it generically, which is sort of the standard XHTML, HTML4 way of doing it, even though I'm going to use HTML5 just because, well, I like the doc type. And I like this because if I were to do it another way, this is your doc type for the old one. And I am just too old to remember that. So I like doc type HTML. I can remember it. The next thing we have to do is put in HTML because that's the start of our HTML page and every element, which an element is a pair of tags. So like here, I'm opening my element, I'm closing my element, and everything between the two tags and what is included in between is part of that element. And I'm leaving out some things that are really good to include, but the page will still work without them and I'm trying to not complicate it too much. So I'm going to put in a title, Mary's Epic Fictional Resume. You can pretty much ignore anything in here as being facts, except that my name is Mary, and if you ask my parents, it's not that either, because it's Meredith. So, that's the head. It tells us information about the page. Then we get to the page itself. Now, in HTML, it's a good idea to occasionally comment to document your work. And a comment is done with a opening triangular bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, your comment, and then close it, dash, dash, bracket. And so we're going to put in the body section. So the body tag contains the body of our work. And you're going to do a much more in-depth resume than me, but I'm going to show you some of the basics. We're going to put in an, an H1 tag. Mary's epic resume. You are absolutely encouraged to make the most amusing fictional resume you wish. All that needs to be true is your first name. I like an assignment that makes me laugh. And when you're hand coding here, you can click over here and you can see what's going on. And so if I wanted to underline that because it's important, I would use a horizontal rule. And then typically you would have um, an objective. So we're going to make that an H4 less important. And then I'm going to put a paragraph under that. Seeking the opportunity to work from home three to five hours per week and make over $90,000 a year. Never ever going to happen, but I told you it's completely fictional. You'll notice that I'm leaving a blank line here. I do that for my own sake. I like to break up logical pieces of the program. So as I'm breaking up sections, I'm going to leave a few blank lines. This is for me. The computer's going to completely ignore it. So I'm going to put in another H4 because I'm keeping it at the same level. And we're going to say education is my next asset. And we will put in a nice little list of, of my education that I've completed. Um, Mary, oops, let's make sure we put this in a tag. Mary is totally brilliant. She finished high school 
at the tender age of seven and now holds the following pH these. Yeah, I don't even think that's correct grammar for that. So, obviously fake. But you'll see this is giving me very, very basic formatting. And in here, I'm going to actually put in a list of my fake PhDs. Um, I could put it in as an unordered list. Uh, neuroscience. There's gosh darn it, if I'm going to have a fake PhD, well, I might as well have something clever. And then I'm going to say I also have a degree in computer science. And we'll give, my, give myself another one, uh, rocket science. Because I've got to somehow justify the price tag for my skill set. Okay, this is an unordered list. This is an ordered list. Get the difference? Ordered list, numbers, unordered list, bullets. Okay, so I should have a skill set here, so we're going to say that it's an H4 and skills. And paragraph. Mary is able to instantly learn anything simply by Googling it. Probably also not a good idea to put yourself in like the third person here. I should probably have this as yeah, we'll leave it in third person. Resumes are kind of funky that way. This is not an actual resume you'd turn in. And that's all I believe I need to say about my skill sets. I'm going to put in references as quotes. This is going to come up later because I'm going to turn this into something else. So I'm going to do references as testimonials. And we'll put in a paragraph and a quote. Here is the most interesting programmer in the world. And my quote tags did not appear. Let's take a quick look at this. You'll notice I check regularly. If I see something that's going funky, nope, quotes appear fine in Firefox. Check that if it doesn't do what you expect it to do. And then I'm going to, and this is not necessarily the best way to do it in HTML5, I'm going to put in another paragraph. I'm going to put in as emphasis. And I'm going to put in some non-breaking spaces and because efficient programmers are a good fan of copy and paste. Now you might wonder why I'm doing this. It's because you can't put more than one space in a row and have it recognized. I'll demonstrate that in just a second. I think he, the most interesting man in the world he had a few too many Dos Equis before he was misquoted. Okay, and again, that emphasis isn't appearing. So I'm going to take a quick check in Firefox. And I use Firefox almost exclusively when I'm hand cloning. Okay, that really didn't work. So I'm going to have to go and see what I did wrong. Now I can do that a couple ways. I'm going to view the page source here. 
Oh, because they put it, the emphasis around the non-breaking spaces. That was not what I wanted to do. Okay, I get it nested wrong. This isn't an error here. The orange codes tell me that that is a special character and the fact that I made this particular error tells me I should not try to program and do recordings late at night. So where the, er where the tags should have been to have this give me the effect that I'm looking for should have been right there. Oh look, broke the tags. Okay, so you'll notice when I break a tag, the tag actually appears up in here. And if you want to find that broken tag, you just highlight it. And yep, I have it there. And what I actually want is that. And there we go. Now it's emphasis. Now you could use italics. I'm doing this partly correctly. This is semantic. When you're having a semantic website, that means, and that's the correct way to do it, that your tags have meaning and they aren't named for their formatting. Because you can use italic or bold and they still work, but they're really not the correct way to do things because your formatting tags in HTML should be descriptive. And then I'm going to put in some just contact information at the end. And we'll say don't contact Mary. She will contact you. I don't think I'm going to get any jobs off this resume. That's okay. So terrible resume correctly set up. This is your most basic, basic form of layout. We've done none. I mean, it exists and you can see it. But if I were to display this for you, and this time we'll do it in Chrome, it works, but it's boring. But the thing is, this would work anywhere. It would work for a phone. It would work for a tablet. It would work for a browser for the blind. You should always start with the basic functionality, and then you can start adding to it to make it um, more exciting. That's going to be the end of this video. I'm going to pick up in the next step and we're going to start breaking this down into separate divisions so that we can keep moving forward and making the formatting more interesting.